Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Climb Krios Pro Adventure Helmet. Climb's Krios Pro is a serious adventure motorcycling helmet and at 540 pounds, it better be. So let's get into the nitty gritty. The Pro is based on Climb's base Krios helmet and is 160 pounds dearer. But thankfully, there's quite a lot to separate this one from the cheaper lid. First up, this one has a fully carbon fiber shell and that's distinct from the straight Krios, which has a composite fiber shell. This Pro is light, it weighs 1,312 grams on our scales in a size medium. But don't get carried away that spending the extra for this Pro model means there's gonna be a weight saving that comes with that over the base model. We weighed a normal Krios at 1,256 grams, and that's about 50 grams less than this Pro. There's nothing undercover or secret about the fact. Climb's stickers on the respective helmets both show that this Pro is slightly heavier than the base Krios helmet. And let's face it, at 1,300 grams, this lid is hardly a tub of lard. It feels very light on the bike, and that feeling of mine is borne out in the customer reviews. Every person who's bought this helmet and left a review calls this helmet light. So if going for the Pro doesn't bring a weight advantage, what does it bring? There are several upgrades, aside from the obvious aesthetic appeal of the all carbon fiber shell. One of the most spoken about differences is in the impact liner, the bit that absorbs the energy if you're unlucky enough to hit your head. The bulk of it on the Krios Pro is expanded polystyrene or EPS, like pretty much every helmet has been since about 1954. But some of the Pro's liner is made from a new material called Coroid. This material consists of small extruded polymer tubes that all combine to create a compressible liner which absorbs energy when it's impacted. Think of it like upturned drinking straws welded together in a kind of honeycomb structure. It's lighter than polystyrene, and the fact that each tube is hollow means air can flow through those tubes to give better ventilation to the inside of the helmet. It's been used in bicycle helmets before, but this is the first bike lid that I'm aware of that uses it. In this helmet, it sits across the top of the shell, and it combines with a traditional EPS liner through the rest of the lid to give the impact protection that you need. Moving on to ventilation, air gets to the forehead through this chunky sliding vent just above the visor and that allows a direct flow of air. That's the same as the straight Krios model helmet, but where the Pro takes it up a notch is in the chin venting. This chunky switchable vent exposes a substantial inlet that's only protected by a very airy foam insert to stop any debris and bugs getting through. Air flows more freely in this helmet than in the base model when that vent is open and you can also close it, which isn't something you can do on the other lid. The removable peak is the same as the base model Krios and it works in conjunction with the visor, which is where this Pro model has perhaps the most noticeable difference to the base model. The standard visor on this Pro model is a straightforward clear one, but in the box there's this light reactive transitions visor. Transitions is a coating that means the visor becomes as tinted as a race visor in strong sunlight and reverts back to being completely clear as the light fades and you're riding at night. I think it's absolutely brilliant and really makes the Krios Pro stand out from other adventure helmets, including the straight Climb Krios, which comes with a clear visor as standard and has a permanently tinted visor in the box for when you're riding off-road. Some of the premium kit on this Pro, I could take it or leave it, but the Transitions visor is a big, big benefit over the cheaper Krios helmet. Both visors supplied with this Pro, the Transitions and the clear one, have the pins for a pin lock, and there's a pin lock 120 insert in the box to make sure you get clear vision regardless of the weather. There's only a couple of reasons I'd see for using the clear visor rather than this Transitions one, and that's that the Transitions visor does tend to react a little bit more seriously on cloudy days, and sometimes it's a bit darker than I'd like, but I've never found that it's gone dark enough to be a real problem. The other reason is that you might be riding on dirt roads and you're worried about scratching the expensive transitions visor. It's definitely worth being more careful than usual with this visor, as a replacement transitions visor is 150 quid, whereas it's normally 50 quid for a clear one. 
But if you're planning on dirt riding, you're probably gonna be looking down the route of using goggles. There's room beneath the peak on the side for the goggle strap to fit, and there's plenty of room inside the aperture for goggle frames. And you don't even have to remove the visor to use this lid with goggles, as the strap will fit under the visor once it's been raised. Although, goggles will fit better if you do remove the visor first. To remove the visor, first you undo this screw at the top of the shell, and then you rotate these buttons on the side and pull them away, which leaves space for the peak to be pulled away, and then the visor can be removed as well. If you want to run the helmet without the peak, or street mode as Climb call that, you can take it off and then fit two side covers that are supplied with the lid. They go in here and they just take up the space that would normally be taken up by the peak. It's handy to be able to run a helmet without the peak when riding long distances on the road, as peaks can disturb the aerodynamics, but I found there wasn't too much of an issue on that score when wearing the Krios Pro with a peak. The final difference worth noting for the Krios Pro over the base model is the strap fastener. This one is a system called Fidlock. It clips together using magnets and can only be undone by pulling this red release tab in the correct direction. It feels odd to someone like me who's been riding for 20 years and is used to either D-rings or a buckle to have something that comes apart so easily. It feels as though it shouldn't work, but try as I might, I can't work out what's actually wrong with it other than being different to what I've always known. And people who find helmet straps too much of a fiddle, especially D-rings, tend to drive a lot of people mad. And I think those people will absolutely love this system because it is really simple to use. It just flicks together with those magnets and it's done up. So those are the main differences between the Pro and a normal Krios. And there's actually quite a lot to separate them, but they still share some really essential basics, including a very soft and comfortable interior lining. that's also been tailored to suit a dedicated Senna 10U intercom. There's a link to that unit in the description for this video if that's something you want to check out. That lining is fully removable for washing and it runs a chin curtain here to block out drafts. Customer reviews for this Krios Pro helmet are really positive. People are especially complimentary about the transitions visor and the breadth and depth of the peripheral vision that they get from this helmet. Those things all get a lot of praise. I'd agree with all of that and I was seriously impressed with this helmet when I tested it. At £540 it's not cheap but there are plenty of reasons why I think you'd want to stretch your budget to get one. I hope that goes into all the detail you want about the Climb Krios Pro, but if you have anything to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.